Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Excuse my kids in the background, they're really kind of loud this morning. Yapping away, but I wanted to do this video. I was watching a video this morning. Um, in fact, I've done this before. I've watched a couple of videos where people are saying that you could be autistic if blah blah blah. And I saw another one this morning and I don't know, I'm just really intrigued about this topic because sometimes I wonder if I am autistic in a way. Um, just curious, there's a lot of undiagnosed autism out here, so, and there's so many different spectrums of it, so I'm really curious. So the first thing that this one video said was, um, to where you might be autistic. The first one was that routines are very essential to you, often pretty elaborate. Getting off track ruins your day. <sighs> yep, that's pretty much me. I do definitely have that. Um, when I'm off a routine for too long, I feel not naked, it's not the right word. Um, I feel unaccomplished. I feel like I didn't really accomplish anything. And I feel like crap towards the end of the day. I always tell my husband that, like, I have to have a list. Um, and when I don't have a list, my brain just goes everywhere because I'm not centered in anything. And yeah, it does kind of ruin my day a lot of times. I go through that a lot, especially with kids. You know, if nothing's planned or whatnot, and things just go haywire. Sometimes I just don't like that. It kind of does ruin my day um, a lot of times. <sighs> the other one, I mean, uh, number two says, very few but very close friends. Yeah, I have very few friends. I can't say they're like super close right now because the friends I'm referring to, I think I just met them like this year. Like, the one friend I met a couple of years back. Oh, I guess they were like super close because it's only online friends. We can't really meet up because we're not close in proximity, you know what I mean? I got one friend in Mexico, I got one friend in Virginia, I got one in, uh, I forgot, maybe Alabama, I believe, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I can't really meet up with them per se, but, you know, we try to, um, stay close and have a very close niche and we kind of bond through certain things. So, eh, yeah, that's true too. I have very few friends, I'm not struggle with friends for a long, long time, but the batch, I have friends, the, the batch of friends I have right now, I feel are going to stick around and they're going to be very close and very beneficial to me. So yeah, it took me a long time to get here. I'm 34 years old. <sighs> Next thing to where I might be autistic is extraordinary achievement in one narrow field weak in others. That is me to a T. If you know me, then you know I am excellent in English, I'm excellent in language, grammar, spelling, all of that. I'm very, very, very well versed in anything that involves speaking, spelling, writing, all of that. But I suck like shit in math. <laughs> like literally, math um, is not my thing. I'm not very good at math at all. I always failed my math classes when I was younger. Um, especially when I got to like middle school, it was just a very big struggle for me. But again, I always aced anything English. I was like on par with everything reading based, spelling based, grammar based, and I hate typos to this day. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely true. <clears throat> Next one. Um, being the quickest to answer in class. Yep, I did that too. Regarding English, anything English related, anything Spelling related, grammar related, story related, always the first to answer. I used to get teased back when I was in elementary school for being the first one to answer. I was called a teacher's pet a lot. Kids didn't understand me. They teased me, they threw things at me because they didn't understand or they thought I was being a smart ass or being smart and I'm like, how am I? I just, I knew the answer. I'm like, you know, I was like that um, back in elementary school. Middle school, I kind of got off because y'all know I had a very traumatic childhood experience, but yeah, that threw me off then, but I, that is literally true about me. Um, always the first one to know the answer, definitely. Let's see, number five. Deeply knowledgeable, knowing too much about one thing. 
you know, again with the English. I am that way with English and I am that way with a lot of other things. Like, um, what am I? I know the ball. I have those days I will sit there and for hours and research like weather and conspiracy theory type stuff. I'll go deep. Like I love to go deep down the rabbit hole and I'll be there for hours. Like literally. So I've researched and I hate using that word but I'll say research because I did actually research. I have re looked up a lot of these topics. So in that case research is um true here. I, I have researched many conspiracy theories. So I'm very knowledgeable on a lot of things, very knowledgeable about stuff like um, weather, you know, weather creation, all that jazz, chemtrails, um, <clears throat> a lot of government type stuff that we don't really talk about. Um, a lot of things that are unknown, like, you know, a lot of under the table type shit. I'm just like that. And it's weird because my dad was like that too. I think I got it from him. Um, he was very much into conspiracies and how they work and how things really happen going super deep down the rabbit hole, you know, studying about how celebrities act and, you know, MK Ultra, you know, that type of stuff. Way deep in the rabbit hole. That's how I like to go. I have those days where I just go deep. <laughs> Hella deep. And if anybody asks me about it, if anybody says one thing about one little subject, I'll just be blurting out shit. And they're like, whoa, wow, okay. And I'm like, well, I <laughs> I didn't know a lot about it. Me and my husband we talk about this stuff a lot. So, yeah, um, I am pretty knowledgeable about that. I will um, admit. Next one, um, oh, being considered rude when being honest or blunt without understanding why. Yo, that is the epitome of my story. I have definitely been there. I don't call myself epic realist for no reason. I have always been kind of. Uh, well, I'm not always blunt, because a lot of times I'm afraid to be blunt in front of people. But online, I've been pretty blunt about some things over many years, and family has never gotten it. Especially, like, extended family. They used to call me rude years ago when I was, like, blogging, and I would say certain things in my blogs. And it's like, well, I'm just being honest about it. You know, when people are like, oh, you're so rude, but you don't understand about this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm just... Speaking from my perspective, I'm not being rude, I'm just being honest. This is what it really is. You know, you people are just weird. And they used to call me, well, not used to, they still call me weird. People call me weird because I'm being honest a lot of times. Even though now, at this point in my life, people are more praising me for being real versus years ago when I was in my 20s and whatnot, when I was just trying to come into myself um, and trying to heal from my abuse. I was, ju I was just, um, people slandered me a lot for being rude. And I wasn't, I didn't see myself as rude. And I would be trying to apologize, but they're just not hearing it. It's like, oh my god, you don't understand nothing. I'm like, neither do you, bitch. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely true for me. Definitely. Like, <sighs> nowadays, um, there's a lot of things I don't even put online because people are just rude in the sense that they, they're thinking I'm being rude. And I don't consider myself being rude. I'm just being honest. I just like being as honest as possible. You know, I hate lying. I can't stand lying. I'm not a good liar. <laughs> I'm just not. Um, the only way I will lie is if it's really detrimental at the moment and I feel like I have to, but that's rare. That's just rare, y'all. Like, <laughs> I hate it. I hate even a lot of people. <sighs> so, yeah. Another one is very true. Um, what's the next one? Being shy, reserved, introvert, weird, quiet one, or frequent women. Very true. That is phenomenally true for me. I've always been shy. In the beginning, I was reserved, I was an introvert, quiet, weird. I've been called all those things throughout my school life. Now, of course, when I became grown, I started being open. Like I just said, I started being more blunt online, being more blunt in general, being more honest and open about stuff. But when I was coming up, Public school ruined me. Public school made me quiet because I was originally not as quiet. I was I wasn't like a super quiet kid. But public school made me very much shy and introverted and all that stuff. Kids called me weird. You know, I got bullied a lot. They picked on me. They called me sh oh, I'm not shy. They said I was too quiet. I 
still have my autograph book to this day from high school. And as everybody wrote, you know, stay quiet. You know, and some people were like, oh, stop being so quiet. You know, I want to hear you talk more. I'm like, well, excuse me then. <laughs> yeah, definitely weird. I'm always, I consider myself weird. You know, we're all weird in some way, but I definitely consider myself weird. So, I don't know. I guess that's another trait in autism. And again, I see this in different videos. I see this in many videos that people do about autism. Um, next one. Manage the social situation by overthinking and preparing. You can act social, but it takes a lot of work. Yep, I do that too. <sighs> Sometimes I'm not very good in front of people. I do overthink and I do over prepare. When I know I'm about to engage someone, I do tend to over prepare. Like I sometimes I'll play the conversation out in my head or I'll play out how things should be or how I want things to be. But then sometimes when I'm in front of the person, it doesn't actually end up that way. Yeah, I, I do do that a lot. Um, it does take a lot of work out of me to be very social. I don't like being around a lot of people for a long period of time. Um, usually after like one or two hours, I'm ready to go, you know, especially if the conversations are going somewhere where I'm just, I'm lost or I don't feel like getting involved because they're talking about something I, I'm, I have no interest in. Um, yeah, I do do that. I still do that to this day. I overthink everything. I overthink how I overthink what my kids are going to do about stuff. I overthink what my husband's going to say about something. I just, I do that a lot. I prepare it in my head how I think things are supposed to go and if it, a lot of times if it doesn't go where it's supposed to go, I'm usually disappointed but I'm not like overly disappointed where I'll break down about it. I'd, I'd just be like, damn, that, that did not go the way I wanted it to. <laughs> happens a lot. A lot. And with five kids, it happens a lot. Next one. Sensory overload. Some things bother you. I mean, some things bother your senses. Could be a texture, sound, lighting, etc. Definitely. Definitely. I am... I don't know why, but I have an extreme sense of smell. I can smell anything <laughs> around me. I'll, I'm always the first one to smell something. I find that weird. Like if my nose is clogged from sinuses or whatnot, I'm always the first one to smell anything. And um, I'm not sure if that's like I'm sensitive to it, but I am also sensitive about other things like my eyes. My eye, well, I obviously have eye problems because my glasses. I'm very nearsighted, I think. And my eyes are very sensitive to stuff, like very, very sensitive. Um, if I'm looking at a screen too long, um, well, I'm always on a screen, but sometimes it'll actually bother my eyes a lot. Um, I can't hardly cut onions at all because, y'all, if I cut onions, y'all, if I cut onions, my eyes will be burning for an hour. No joke. They'll be burning for like over an hour. My husband looking at me like, my eyes been stopped burning. What's wrong with yours? I'm like, I don't know, but it's still burning like shit. I'll still be sitting there with tears running down. That, that happens. I don't know. I, I think my eyes are always sensitive. My eyes are sensitive to a lot of other things as well. When I go out and do stuff, um, my eyes tend to be more sensitive than other people. Like when I get water in my eyes. I hate getting water in my eyes. My eyes will burn what seems like, you know, more than other people. I don't know. It just seems that way. So my eye, I have extreme sen eye sensitivity in my nose. I can smell anything. I can smell a lot of things. I'm very sensitive to sound as well. And y'all, it doesn't help as far as having five kids. I have five kids. There's constant sounds. I'm hearing sounds right now, but there comes a moment where I just get overloaded and triggered by all the sounds they're making as I tell them to shut up. You know, I have to tell them to just calm it down because I'm gonna fill them with a little gasket. The sound, I'm very, I don't, I don't like loud sounds. I just don't. Um, I remember even years ago when I was in college and I used to ride the train a lot. I would go to the train, I mean, I would be downstairs waiting for the train. And as soon as the train shows up, I would sit there and plug my ears. I would just be like this. I would plug them really hard because I hate when, when the train gets really close to me and it just starts making that loud ass screech. I hated that. I hated that. Um, as far as like other things, I just, I don't like loud sounds. They kind of freak me out and they kind of make me just kind of go weird inside and I just have to like, oh my God, stop, stop, stop. You know, that's just me. I am sensitive to a lot of those things. That's just what it is. 
Um, so I really like a sensory overload pretty easily. Um, next one, involuntary fidgeting. Don't know what to do with your hands. Yep, definitely every day. Hell, I'm doing it right now, probably. Um, I was playing with my ears. I do fidget a lot. I really do. I'll pick my nails, I'll play with my hair, I'll pull my hair, I'll be like, you know, playing with it all the time. Uh, scratching, playing, cracking my knuckles. Um, yeah, always. I'm always doing something with my hands. I'm always fidgeting randomly if I'm, if I'm able to do it with my hands. Self-soothing. That's what they call it. Self-soothing, stimming, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, I, I didn't really know that was considered, well, I kind of, I did know because I watched a lot of videos about autism, but I didn't really realize that it was me, I guess. I haven't really looked into it in a while. Um, next one, struggle with language communication, using internal references, very narrow expertise in the field without realizing others are not following. Um, not being able to express desires, kind of. I can't fully say that I have that issue. I say kind of. I do somewhat struggle with not being able to express my desires because I just never had the chance to express my desires. You no. Know? Um, the only way I could do that is online because people in real life is like, I have not, like I said, I have not really had the chance. And a lot of times I'm afraid of how people are going to come off if I do express my desires. So again, kind of, I kind of have that. It's not strong. That part is not strong. I don't severely struggle with language communication. Otherwise, I don't think I'd be on YouTube <laughs> if I struggled that bad with it. Um, I do think that I come across pretty well as far as my speech and being able to express what I'm trying to say. I, I think I do. <laughs> So yeah, like I said, somewhat on that one. Um, next one, other acquaintances getting diagnosed with autism around you. No, that's not the case. I, but then again, I'm not around anyone. I'm barely around <laughs> anyone. It's just me and my husband and kids. And my kids haven't been diagnosed. Then again, I haven't had them tested. I hadn't had any reason to get them tested. Except one, only one of my kids, I'm thinking, might have autism. Only one of my sons. But... Eh, no, not really. I can't really claim that because I'm not around anyone. So no one around me has been diagnosed by, by, uh, with it. Um, as far as my husband, if he has it, he's never been diagnosed. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't know. He does have a lot of these same things that I'm mentioning on his list. But hey, nobody has been diagnosed. I'm not around people like that, so I wouldn't even know. <laughs> um, next one. Take a long time to process and deal with feelings with some delay or extremely emotional reaction kind of there as well. Over the years, I have learned to process and deal with my feelings. I've learned a lot about how to process and deal with them. But in the beginning, no, I didn't know how to process them. It would usually just come out in my writing. I'd usually just write a book about it. Or I'd play a song or just do something else. I'd just go about my day and not really fully process it. Um, or I'll have extremely emotional reaction. Like I'll cry every time it happens. Um, I'll feel a certain way and I might act differently than others. I might just, um, my way of usually processing feelings is asking for a lot of hugs. <laughs> like my husband, he knows that I hug too much. <laughs> and it's such a thing as hugging too much. I do hug him too much. I ask for a lot of hugs and he doesn't get annoyed. So I try to like calm down on that. <laughs> but yeah, I process a lot of things through touch. Um, I love being touched. I love touching people are some other one of those sensory overload type things touching is one of those things that get me going you know <laughs> i love um touching people if i'm dating you or something i'll be touching you all the time maybe if i had a close friend like i did have a friend that was close by i would be always touching <laughs> be always probably touching i shouldn't be but <laughs> um, probably plays into my bisexuality as well because i just want to touch everybody so, yeah, that's my reaction. That's sometimes how I, I deal with feelings. Just hugs and touching and, you know, sex, all that other stuff. Anything that goes on with it. <laughs> sometimes it takes me a long time still. But I've gotten a lot better. I've gotten a lot better over the years with processing my feelings and dealing with them, you know. So it's not as bad. Um, I'm just going to this list. i got two more things. 
The next one is either you're the only one not getting it or you're the only one to get it. That's true as well. A lot of times, things online, people will be saying, and I don't get it. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Well, I might miss some joke. And I'm sitting there like, huh? I don't really get it. And somebody has to tell me. I'm like, oh. Okay. And sometimes I am the only one to get something. I'm the only one to understand a certain type of joke. But it has to be a joke that makes sense. Not makes sense. It has to be a joke that revolves around something that I care about, you know, I may be the only one to get it, like I said, something conspiracy related, there might be that one person in a comment of something, um, that will mention something conspiracy related, something that I have, I'm very knowledgeable on, and then I'll comment on them, like, yeah, you're right, because I know blah, 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 and then I'll get, like, five responses, like, what are you talking about, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that, that happens, um, I, that happens on both accounts with me, so, and the last one, the last thing where it says you might be autistic is your parents or siblings or children are autistic. Um, I'm not sure about my parents. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not really sure. My father for sure might be. If anyone in my family is autistic, it's possibly him. Um, for many reasons, it's possibly him. I don't know about my mother. My siblings only have one sister. I'm not really sure about her. I don't really think so. I don't think she exhibits some of the, a lot of these same traits. I don't really know. Um, my children, like I said, I have not got them diagnosed. I have not got them tested or anything of that nature. Like I said, one of my sons, possibly, maybe one of my daughters. But it hasn't been a severe problem to where I needed to have them uh, tested. It has not been something to where, oh, I must get this looked at because this is a problem. No, it's not a problem. We all know I homeschool. I homeschool, so if any one of them are autistic, it doesn't matter to me because, again, they're homeschooled. So I don't feel like they're going to be behind in school because they're autistic or because their teacher doesn't understand them because they have special needs, special um, mental needs that need to be acknowledged or, you know, put in a certain fashion. It's not really a worry with me. So if any of them do have, have autism, then cool. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so I can't really say that that's the case. It's possible though. It's possible that um, they are. And yeah, if I am, that makes a lot of sense as to why certain things have happened in my life. There are a lot of things that happened in my life that will kind of attribute to this. Um, yeah, I might just be autistic. I have not gotten tested or anything. I don't know if I will. Um, maybe one day when I feel like it. If I have the means to. Maybe. It's not going to really change anything. I might just do a video about it. And whatnot. But I have a lot of things. I have majority. 90% of this list is me. This whole list that I just explained. Is all me. So it's like. Mm. And again, I've seen other videos. I've seen many, many videos of other people with autism and I have 90% the same traits. Now, I, I will say that a lot of it is sprinkled with PTSD slash CPTSD because I do have that. It's sprinkled with that along with ADHD possibly. Um, I don't like all these terms to be honest. I don't like all these acronyms and terms because you know, everybody tries to fit you in a box, and sometimes you can't be, you don't want to be put in a box. Um, but it is what it is. If somebody is trying to understand you and understand your mental capacity, sometimes these terms are the only way to put it. And a lot of times I'm looked at as weird. I'm looked at as weird all over the place. People love me sometimes, or they act like they love me, but I'm still weird to them, you know? So, if I am autistic, it is what it is. Am I going to get tested? Possibly in the future. Um, I'm unable to right now. Um, but yeah, this list is spot on. So if you guys want to see this list or if you want to know the video I looked at to get this list. Because somebody mentioned it in the comments and I was very thankful that they broke it down um, to where I could like have it in front of me. Then I will leave the video in the description box if you care to notice that. And yeah. That was a mouthful. <laughs> but yeah, I believe I'm done with this video. I believe I've said everything I've needed to say. 
Do I believe I'm autistic? Possibly. It's a high chance, high possibility. Um, hey, it is what it is. Um, yeah. I believe I'm done with this video. I hope you guys are having a great, as great of a day as I am. I hope your holidays go well. I hope everything is going well for you guys. I also hope you guys have a great day, second hour, month, minute, decade, and month. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Peace out.